everybody. Thanks for joining in. You're live with New Image College today. Today we are going to be learning about the cell, anatomy, and physiology. The tissues, the organs, and the systems. Okay? Before we start though, make sure that you've subscribed if you haven't already, and make sure and ding the bell. Make sure you get all of our notifications. And of course, like our video. Okay, let's get started. So, <clears throat> anatomy is the study of the structure of the body and what it is made up of, like bones, muscles, skin. Histology is the study of the small individual structures of the body, like hair, nails, sweat glands. And physiology is the function or activities performed by the body structures. So, you'll need to know what anatomy means, the study of the structures of the body, histology, the study of the minute structures of the body, and physiology, the study of the functions of the different structures of the body, okay? An understanding of the body will make you more proficient in performing many services, um, considering how you're touching the human body on a regular basis, giving hand massage, foot massage, um, dealing with the hands and feet every day. So cells are the basic unit of all living things, including bacteria, plants, and animals. The study of the cell is called cytology. The human body is made up entirely of cells, fluids, and cellular products. Cells have the ability to reproduce, providing new cells that enable us to grow and replace worn out old cells. Cells are made up of protoplasm, a colorless jelly-like substance that contains food elements such as water, which makes up 80% of the cell, protein makes up 15%, lipids 3%, carbohydrates 1%, and nucleic acid and minerals 1%. There are two types of protoplasm. There's nucleoplasm found within the nuclear wall, and then there's cytoplasm found within the cell wall. The four main structures of a cell are protoplasm, cell membrane, nucleus, and organelles. The nucleus is the vital body in the cell that is responsible for growth, metabolism, reproduction, and transmission of characteristics of the cell. The cell membrane retains internal structure and allows for exportation and importation of certain materials. Um, so importation and exportation, like eating and drinking. The cell has to eat and drink and um, excrete toxins. The passage of certain substances through a semi-permeable membrane is called osmosis. So where in your house does osmosis take place? Osmosis is a semi-permeable membrane it only allows certain things through. So like a coffee filter, a tea bag, um, if you bake or cook with cheesecloth, the same idea, okay? So that's how the cell absorbs nutrients and excretes waste. The cell has little organelles known as the little organs that perform all the many functions of the cell. So we're gonna go through those now. So you need to know that ribosomes make protein. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes big molecules, stores energy, and you don't have to say smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you can just say smooth ER. And then we have the rough ER, which transports protein, the mitochondria, responsible for energy, the Golgi complex, collects and packages, the lysosome contains digestive enzymes, the vacuole is a storage container, the centriole is responsible for a cellular division, and the penocytotic vesicle is responsible for eating and drinking. Eating and drinking known as exocytosis and endocytosis. And then we have other structures of the cell. These are other structures um, on your cell diagram. The cytoplasm is the ground substance of the cell. The nucleus produces DNA. DNA is known as deoxyribonucleic acid. Nucleoplasm, ground, ground substance of the nucleus. Nuclear membrane controls substances going in and out of the nucleus. Microvilli, receiving or ejecting matter. And the cell mem membrane, uh, which controls uh, substances going in and out of the cell. So cellular reproduction. As long as the cell receives an adequate supply of food, oxygen, water, um, temperature maintenance, waste elimination, it will grow and thrive, just like we do. Most of our body cells are capable of growing and repairing themselves during their life cycles. 
Cell reproduction is known as mitosis, amatosis, and meiosis. So mitosis is cell division in which each daughter cell contains the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So like your skin, bones, and hair, how they reproduce. Amatosis happens a lot quicker. It's simple cell division and it happens in bacteria. So think of the number of bacteria that reproduce every day, 32 million. If that happened with humans, that would be crazy, impossible. So we know amatosis is simple, it happens fast, it's direct, and it usually happens with bacteria. And then meiosis is the type of cellular division in which two successive divisions of the nucleus produce cells that contain half the number of chromosomes present in the original cells, so like in sperm and the ova. Cell metabolism. It's a complex chemical process whereby the body's cells are nourished and supplied with the energy needed to carry on their many activities. There are two phases of metabolism. There's anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism is the building up of cells, making cells bigger, storing energy, and catabolism is the opposite. It's using energy, the cells get smaller, but these two things happen at the same time, um, continuously. They break down energy and they store energy, okay? Building up and consuming at the same time. Um, therefore, homeostasis is maintained. So you need to know that homeostasis is the state in which the, the body functions best. So when your cells are working properly, your tissues, your organs, organs and your systems, you're going to live a happy life, happy, healthy life. Um, so let's go into tissues next. Tissues are composed of a group of cells of the same kind. So each tissue has a specific function and can be recognized by its characteristic appearance. So body tissues um, are known as connective tissues, muscular tissues, nervous tissue, epithelial tissue, and liquid tissue. So connective tissue supports, binds, uh, and holds other parts of the body together like cartilage, ligaments, tendon, fascist tissue. Your muscular tissue contracts and moves various parts of the body. Nervous tissue carries messages to and from the brain and controls and coordinates all body functions. Epithelial tissue is basically your skin, uh, protective covering on the body surface, and liquid tissues carries food, waste products, and hormones by means of blood and lymph. And then we have organs. The main organs are the brain, controls the body, the heart circulates blood, lungs supply oxygen, the liver removes toxic waste, kidneys excrete water, uh, and other waste products, and the stomach and intestines digest food. So we've talked about the cells. A group of cells turns into tissues. A group of tissues turns into organs. And then a group of organs working together creates the systems in our body, which are the integumentary system, which is the large, largest system. The integumentary system is basically the skin. The skeletal system is the physical foundation or framework of the body. The muscular system covers shapes and supports the skeleton. The nervous system controls and coordinates um, all functions of the body. The circulatory system supplies blood. The endocrine system is made up of ductless glands that secrete hormones into the blood. So you have duct glands and ductless glands. Um, your two duct glands are your sweat glands and your oil glands. They come out of a duct and they come out of a pore and an ostia. But your ductless glands um, that secrete hormones are like your thymus gland, your pineal body, your pituitary gland, um, your thyroid gland, those, those glands. Your excretory system eliminates waste from the body. Your respiratory system supplies oxygen. The digestive system changes food into substances that can be used by the cells of the body. And the reproductive system, which enables human beings to reproduce. Okay, so the rest of the chapter is all the anatomy that you guys have already done. We've already done the hand and arm bones and muscles, the foot and leg bones and muscles. So this is all you need to focus on right now. It's just the cell, tissues, organs, and systems. Okay? So there is a study guide that 
you guys can fill out. That is exactly what you need to know for the test. Um, I'll make sure, um, or I'll check with Anna, and I'll see if she's put that in your folders. If she, if she hasn't, then we'll put that in today. And um, just make sure that you know how to label the cell. So you should have these cell diagrams in your folders. And yes, you do need, you need to know how to label. So we'll just go through together now. If you don't catch all this now, that's okay. We can go through it uh, during the Zoom tomorrow. But the upper left is cell membrane, smooth ER, nuclear membrane, penocytotic vesicle, mitochondria, vacuole, Golgi body, and then here, the lower right, nucleolus, ribosomes, rough ER, nucleoplasm, lysosome, centrioles, cytoplasm, and microvilli. Okay? And that's it for our lesson. So we'll open it up for questions and answers. And I'm going to get set up for my demo. We're going to be doing some fun gel nail art demos. We'll start with some basic designs. Um, and once you master the basic designs, the more complex designs are a lot easier to do. So um, we'll start with some really cute designs. And we're going to be doing different um, nail art designs every week. So if you guys have any requests or you want to see me do something, uh, just let me know. And I can incorporate that into the following week's lessons. Okay? So I'll give you time to set up. And I'll meet you back here in a few minutes. Okay, I've already got a base nail prepared for you. And I'm going to show you how to do um, a glitter fade. Okay, it's really simple, it's super popular. Everyone wants the glitter fade tip. Um, but in order to make it look nice and dense at the free edge and nice and sparse, up throughout the body. Um, there is a certain technique that I do um, and uh, it's really pretty. So you have your base here. I've already done that. I've just used the cover pink um, as my base. So let's say that we've already built the nail. Um, we built the body and we want to do a bit of a design on top and then we want to cover it with our top coat. Okay. I'm using a little hook right now. The little hook um, you can get from the dollar store. They're really cheap and then I've just got some double-sided sticky tape on there so it actually works really good for just holding the nail on and it's easy to hold and maneuver. Um, you can use the finger as well. Um, just personal preference, whatever you decide. And for a lot of the desi designs too, I like to just hold the tip myself. So whatever you want to do. So I've already put that in. So now let's apply the glitter. So I'm working with a blue glitter today. So what I need to do is I can get my gel top coat. So I'm using the Gelish Dry Armor. And you can pretty much create any pigment you want. We have this kind of chrome bronze pigment. So I know sometimes you, you can't have every color of gel um, available. Um, so if you have pigments, any kind of like mineral powder or pigment powder, you can mix with the gel and you can create your own pigments. As long as the ratio isn't more than the actual gel. So like a 70-30 or a 40-60 ratio um, is good. 50-50 um, is probably too much pigment. But I'll show you. It's really easy to do. Um, but first let's start with our glitter.
I've got some decals here too we can play around with. Embedded decals and gems, super popular as well. So we have our top coat just on a piece of tin foil, or if you have a palette to work off of, that's great. You can scoop some of your glitter. Now you can put your glitter directly on your palette, or you can actually scoop up and dip in in your container. Um, you run the risk of contaminating the container if you do it that way, but it can be done either way. Okay, clean that. Make sure your brush is nice and clean. I have my non-acetone, my paper towel, and you can use a nail wipe. Okay. So I'm going to start with the entire circumference of the body of the nail. So I'm going to lift up some of my gel top coat. Not too much because we're going to, going to be working with a few different layers and we don't want it to be too thick. Pick up some glitter. And this is going to be a very sparse layer. So you want to spread your glitter out. Now my focus is the body of the nail. I'm going to be moving down so my circle is kind of here. So I'm focusing on how I want my glitter fade to fade into either the cuticle line or the upper body of my nail, okay? Okay, I think that's good. And the great thing about gel is you can play with it and change things around until you're 100% happy before you actually have to cure it. Okay, that's good, so we'll cure that. And you only need to cure for five, five seconds in an LED light in between your thin, thin layers. Okay. Now our second ball is going to be half of that circle, okay? So we did our full circle. Now half of that is here. We're going to focus on that and then we're going to do a third circle which focuses on that dense free edge, okay? So we're going to pick up some top coat, pick up some glitter, and now I'm only focusing on this area. Clean your brush. Okay. When you're happy with your second layer, Here. Five seconds is good. Now 
and my last layer. I'm going to focus on the lower part, the free edge, and I'm going to make it really dense. Really cap that free edge with your glitter. You don't want it to be sparse on the end at all. And you can do this in reverse as well. You can do your dense glitter fade from the cuticle down, which is also really cute. Okay, when you're happy, cure. Five seconds. Clean your brush. Okay, so now I'm going to add some gems. So I have to figure out where I want my gems or my decals. So in order to do that, I need to apply a top coat to the entire surface of the nail, okay? And then I can place my gems um, or my decals wherever I want. So let's decide what we wanna use. So I think, um, always have tweezers on hand. Um, it's good to pick up your little decals. It's great too, you can use the sticky part of your brush to pick up different decals, but if you don't want to get um, product on them, then just use your tweezers. So let's grab some of that, grab some of that. Okay, you can also just use your finger. Let's grab that and not that. Okay, so I'm going to put my top coat on. over the entire nail. Make sure you don't get glitter in your top coat. If there's any little loose particles, get rid of them. Okay, so this is basically going to be the adhesive for my decals. I have some stick there. So let's start placing these. Say I want that there. There. All right, 
say that's the design we want, nice and simple, then we cure it. Okay. Just going to change position a little bit. Good. Okay. And this one I'm going to cure for 30 seconds. When I have bigger decals or um, bulkier um, gems, always 30. So that's going to cure all that inside. And now I just top coat. And you can do layer upon layer upon layer, um, giving it kind of like a three-dimensional look as well. You can put um, nail art in the base, and then in the second layer, and the third layer. Always put your lids back on nice and tight so your product doesn't dry out. Okay. If you're happy with your design, you can go ahead and top coat. If you've done a design like this, where you've got some bulk to the surface, you're, you're going to have to put two top coats on, okay? First one. And second one. That's my last coat, so I'm going to cure that for 60 seconds. And if you have a thicker nail, if you have lots of nail art and uh, your nail ends up being a little thicker, then just do another 60 seconds, okay? Waiting. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. We'll take this off. We'll take the sticky off. Take this off. Now, there isn't really sticky on the surface of this nail like there would be if it was um, like a gel polish top coat. When you're using a hard gel top coat, um, it completely dries, but you still want to wipe it just in case there's any residue. So, wipe it. Okay. Just perfect your sidewalls if there's any jagged edges. So the great thing about doing nail art with builder gel is that um, I didn't have to enclose these decals too far into the actual nail. The nail is already built. Um, when you're using a builder top coat, it's very thick um, and it covers really nicely. So to the touch, it's still really nice and smooth. If you can feel the decals through the top coat, then um, your client's not going to be happy. It's going to snag on things. She's going to pick at it or play with it. Um, you really want your decals to be smooth. So this is a little pearl decal here. So that's smooth to, to the touch. There's no jagged edges, so that's fine. Um, it's kind of like 3D nail art. Okay, so you can see the glitter fade on its own and the glitter fade with a bit of nail art embedded. And now we're going to do one more one more demo on, I'm gonna just show you how to do um, the five petal flower, okay? I'm gonna show you the moon petal and the regular, regular petals. So let's just paint a nail with any color. What color should we do? Actually, you know what? The black and white is always really nice. So let's do our black base and white petal. Okay, I'm going to use, actually, I will use this one so you can see it better. And then I need white. So, or I can do a light pink, actually. Let's do a light pink. Kind of like a mauvey, creamy color. And some black. Good. I'll take this out. Okay, so if you have a dotting tool, get it out now. I have mine right here. So let's do a nice, cute, basic five petal flower. It's really basic and really simple, but super popular in the summer. Everyone wants flowers on their toes or on their big toes. And then Okay. 
those out. One, two, three, four. Now get your petals on and get them on quick and get them curing right away. Um, because it's self-leveling, you don't want them to just mush and blend into every petal. So get your petals on. If you have to do one, two, cure, one, two, cure, then do it that way until you get really fast. Otherwise, it's just a hassle trying to take it all off and start over again. And you just need to flash cure. Okay, so now I can make these other petals a little bigger. Okay, and here. Those two petals are touching and I don't want them to be, so you can use your you can use your brushes to clean that up. Okay. And cure. Splash cure. This is my clear top coat. And I'm just going to place a little bit of top coat in the middle. And I'm going to take that little decal, place it right in the middle. Okay, we'll cure that. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the moon petal. So you can do bigger. We're going to do it on the corner here. And I'm going to do my one flash cure because the petals are bigger. Two. Flash cure. And we'll put our third one right here. Flash cure. Now, it's a black base and we have a creamy taupey petal. So I'm going to go back because I want to make these uh, into moon petals. So all you need to do, I'll kind of show you with this one. We're going to go back over top now with the black. 
So make sure you do one at a time again so it doesn't bleed. One. Two, flash chair, three, And now we're going to do the middle so we can have, let's see, let's do clean that. Get some top coat. Um, let's do this one. Okay, and now we'll top coat twice, and that's it. It's a lot easier doing embedded nail art techniques in gel than it is acrylic, for sure. There's lots of uh, techniques you can do with acrylic, but you have so much time, and you can do layer by layer um, with gel and really thin layers that everything sits exactly the way you want it. And we're going to do a few more of these. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. more top coat so we'll do one there one there we'll pick up okay This color is going to be better. And I have my very fine, uh, very fine tipped dotting tool. I'm going to use that to finish my design off. 
Lash Cure. Actually, I'm going to do pink. Now we're done. Okay, and top coats. Got it on there. Thirty seconds, and one more top coat, and we're done. For time. One more. And again, I'm using my Builder Gel Top Coat, which is great for nail art because it doesn't leave any tacky residue afterwards. So just a quick wipe and you're good. Now I'll quickly just show you um, how to mix pigments with a clear gel. We'll do that quickly while we're waiting here. So say we have um, a nice kind of chrome mineral powder or pigment powder. You can mix it with builder gel or top coat depending on how you want to use it. And you're literally going to create a nice base or a nice polish with it. So I'm going to get my top coat and I can just dip it directly in my pot or I can pre-mix it if I want as well. And you've got a nice pigment color. Okay. And I'll do two coats of that and then that'll give me a good base for nail art or um, a new polish color. Put that in. Okay, so this one's done. You guys can see it's super cute, it's fun for summer, um, and really easy to do. So once you've mastered the five petal flower and the corner flowers, um, the moon petals, we can move on to some other things. And if you guys have any ideas for me or anything you want me to show you for the following weeks, again, just let me know. We can talk over Zoom tomorrow and uh, we can move forward. All right, guys, I'll open it up for questions. I think we're good.
make sure you go into your folders, finish your tests, and if you have any questions uh, about the cell, we can go over that again tomorrow. Okay, that's it for now. Have a great day. Bye, guys.